Hi again then guys and welcome to the second tune setup for GT Sport 1.56 and this I must say is a tune that actually surprised me even though I'm the one that made it <laughs> because as far as this car goes in the end classes I didn't really have high hopes for it. I thought it was fine, and I said as much in my review for the car. It's quick in a general sense, but it doesn't really feel that special to me. Good as a drifter, a little bit too big and wallowy and almost heavy feeling, even though it's actually not a heavy car, compared to many of the great cars that we have in, for instance, N200 already. Now, as far as this tune goes, I found that my first lap wasn't really that impressive to me. It was quicker than my Integra, but it was slower than the Civic, around two minutes. Then I tried it again. Then I did a third lap, and all of a sudden, it was two seconds quicker. Then I did another lap, another half a second quicker. And now, this is actually the sixth fastest N200 car I've ever built, less than a second behind the fastest one ever, which for me is the Porsche 911 Carrera RS. That is not bad, to be 0.9 of a second behind that, I would say is pretty impressive. That's also about 0.9 of a second behind the Porsche 356 Speedster, and both of those Porsches cost a whole lot more <laughs> than this Nissan does, so for bang for buck, it's actually very good. But as highlighted by what I said about the laps, my biggest piece of advice for tuning and using this car, with this tune or otherwise, is stick with it. The car may not impress you to begin with. It actually did not impress me, even with this tune. Stick with it, though, and you will find that you get quicker and quicker. And I believe the car probably has even more potential than what I've got with this tune, in fact. Now, as far as what I've done for power and weight, of course it's N200, you don't need to fully upgrade the power, just get it to 121%, which is the peak of N200. The weight I have dropped as low as it can go. Traction control, you definitely want turned off. It slows you down too much in the lower classes. For the tires, we've got sports softs. Of course, you could go for racing tires if you want to, if the lobby, for instance, that you're in will allow it, then by all means go for racing tyres. As far as the suspension, we've got the ride height as low as possible. It's still not exactly ground scrapingly low, but at least it lowers the centre of gravity considerably. We've got 2.05 on the frequency, which is pretty stiff. 7 and 6 for the anti-roll, then 63 for the dampers on the compression, 92 for the rebound, 2 degrees of camber on the back with 1 on the front. You could try changing that if you want to. That works pretty well for me, but some people might find that the car is still maybe a little bit too tail happy out of corners. It's something that you need to watch, but it's actually one of the reasons why the car is quick. Because interestingly, the Porsches that I mentioned, the 356 and the 911, they're kind of the same. They have that characteristic as well, and I would say they're quicker because of it. As far as the toe, that is neutral. Downforce, of course, cannot be adjusted. For the diff, I've opted for the lowest initial torque, and as you can see, midway for acceleration and braking. That works well for me, but, you know, try other things if you want to. You can always come back to it at the end of the day. And for the gearbox, it was very simple. Once again, I suspect you could probably cut another, maybe half a second at least, off of a lap by fine-tuning the gears, but all I've done is fitted the fully custom gearbox and put the auto setting on 168 miles an hour it really is as simple as that so i haven't adjusted the gears at all haven't adjusted the final drive so you could feasibly make it even quicker if you do that but i wanted to really focus in on the handling and just to see what the car could do and as i said it turns out it can do quite a bit so what you want to see of course is that lap in action my overall thoughts on the 180sx are it's one of those deceptive cars it actually does not feel as good as it really is. And I always find it fascinating to find cars like that. And it's not just road cars. There are actually some race cars like that as well. I personally found that, for instance, the Lamborghini Huracan and the GT by Citroen Group 3 car tunes that I did didn't necessarily feel as fast as some of the others do. Some of the more dramatic cars, like the Ferrari or the Astons. And yet, the Citroen was the quickest I built, and the Lamborghini was even quicker, even though, to me, they didn't feel like they were. This is one of those occasions, again, it's not the fastest, of course, but top six is not bad at all for a very competitive N200 category. And of course, I've tuned a ton of great cars in that class. Integras, Civics, NSXs, Subaru, WRXs, I believe I did a 22B even, a couple of Porsches, so it's got a heady competition to go up against. 
and yet it came out in the top six. That is not bad at all. And as I said, that's only 0.9 behind the quickest tune I've done in N200, which is not bad at all. So overall, if you do decide to use the car, I hope you have a ton of fun with it. If you were maybe struggling to make it competitive, then definitely give the tune a try and see if you do like it. And of course, as with all of my street tunes, you can change the category if you want to. You can give it more power, but I can't guarantee you'll have the same success because obviously once you get into N300 and especially higher, you got some pretty heady competition then. You know, higher level Porsches, that kind of stuff. So be careful if you try to take the car up there. Overall though, if you do want to check out my other tunes, you can click the playlist here on screen. And until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.